Japan, a land of four seasons and bountiful nature. Washoku cuisine uses seasonal ingredients nurtured by the nation's unique climate. It has been recognized as a UNESCO intangible cultural heritage. The roots of this cuisine can be found in Japan's villages, hidden in the countryside far from the city. <laughs> there, local people work to preserve and nurture Japan's traditional food culture, which connects them with their history and climate. So, let's set out on a journey to discover the traditional flavors of Japan's hidden villages. The inland of Shikoku, an island in western Japan, is a region of steep mountains called Nishiawa. Deep within these mountains are little villages where the samurai used to live in hiding. Writer Rebecca Milner will be taking us on this journey. First, we come to the gateway of the hidden village. Oh, wow, that is really a vine bridge. This bridge, called Kazurabashi, is a very primitive suspension bridge made of mountain vines. This bridge was once the only means of crossing this mountain stream. I thought it would make it a little bit more modern for safety reasons, but this really is a bridge made out of vines. But I'm sure it's safe. Don't worry. Cables now run through the vines for safety. Okay, let's go, Rebecca. Let's open the door and take the first step into the hidden village. There is a historical episode behind this bridge. Some say that it was made more than 800 years ago by a clan that had lost in battle and was living in seclusion. They built it out of vines so that they could easily cut the bridge if pursuers came chasing after them. The bridge is rebuilt every three years because it deteriorates quickly. The villagers have thus helped to protect this bridge. Now, let's cross the bridge and go towards the villages deeper in the mountains. can see the villages now. From here, we will be walking up the mountain path. Houses and fields are scattered across the limited surface of the steep mountains. People of this region call this mountain village Sora, meaning sky. There is barely any flat land, and the fields are on oblique plains. Wow. So some steep mountains. What is life like on these steep slopes? Konnichiwa. 
We meet Mrs. Nishi Okada. She shows us around her fields further down the slope. Mr. and Mrs. Nishi Okada have cultivated their own fields on this steep terrain of 25 degrees and are mostly self sufficient. Green beans are in season. Rebecca helps with some field work. It is, it is fun. It's satisfying uh, to s snap them on. <laughs> they grow their vegetables with care, without using any chemical fertilizers or pesticides. There is a local wisdom that enables this sort of sloping land agriculture. Koeguro are made by piling up thatch. They're indispensable for their agriculture. By laying out these koeguro in the fields, erosion can be prevented even on the sloping land after rain or strong winds. Furthermore, they gradually become compost and provide nourishment for the soil. As such, a rich, regenerated soil enables vegetables to grow even on these steep slopes. In the fall, the villagers crop thatch together. There are areas secured especially for their cultivation. They then bring them back to their own fields and make the koeguro. Uh, it, it's incredible to hear the uh, traditional way of farming without using any pesticides or fertilizers, re relying entirely on what the mountain provides um, in the, the pompous grass and, make, and, and how they're able to combat erosion. It's time for a break. We join Mr. and Mrs. Nishiokara for lunch. This is a local traditional dish called buckwheat porridge, using buckwheat grown in the fields. It is a lavish porridge containing dried buckwheat harvested in the fall, chicken, mushrooms, and boiled fish paste. As rice patties cannot be made on these steep slopes, rice cannot be grown in this region. Buckwheat therefore became a replacement for rice. A dish born from local wisdom. あ、違うと思うけど、お醤油が。おいしいです。日本ではあの、お蕎麦はよくあの、麺、麺、うん、あの、蕎麦切りっていうね。そう。で、なぜこういう食べ方があの、これがもう一番あの、保存食になるけり
It is also a traditional preserved food. Mrs. Nishiokata had dried these daikon radishes, harvested in the winter, along the eaves. Each household thus preserves their own food and consumes it throughout the year. Each region in Japan has its own traditional food culture, and there are many attractive landscapes that nurtured this culture. These regions are accredited through a Japanese Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry and Fisheries project called Savor Japan. One such region is Ichinoseki and Hiraizumi in the Tohoku region. Together with the aristocratic culture that flourished after the 11th century, a food culture unique to this region has passed down through the ages. Mochi rice cakes are being thrown at a New Year's festival. Eating mochi is said to bring good health throughout the year. In Japan, it is a custom to eat mochi during the New Year celebrations, especially here in Ichinoseki and Hiraizumi. It is an indispensable food that is consumed during rice planting and harvesting seasons at celebrations and annual events. Methods of cooking mochi have also evolved over time. There are now over 300 mochi dishes. Freshly pounded mochi is very soft, and the taste is exceptional. There is a refined way of eating it, abiding by the rules of etiquette that have been passed down for 400 years. There is even an order in which they must be eaten. In Ichinoseki and Hiraizumi, Mochi is therefore not just a traditional food, but a culture that has been passed down through the ages. We are now in Tokachi, Hokkaido, Japan's best agricultural region with fields and farms spreading across the vast plains. The region is Japan's leading producer of onions, wheat, and potatoes. Recently, there has been an increase of wine manufacturers who make wine out of Hokkaido grapes. Over 120 years ago, some settlers developed an agricultural land despite the harsh environment where winter temperatures fall to minus 30 degrees Celsius. One of the local products that is becoming popular these days is a certain dairy product. And it is... Cheese. In Hokkaido, there are many dairy farms 90% of Japan's natural cheese is produced here, 80% which is produced in Tokachi. The Hokkaido environment is perfect for cheese making. In this region, hot spring water is used in cheese making. The Moor Springs contain some ancient organic substances, which are rare anywhere in the world. The hot spring water is used in the last process of making raclette cheese.
It is used to polish the cheese during the aging process. The ingredients in the hot spring creates a whole new aging process, giving birth to the more washed cheese brand. The taste is mild, a characteristic of Tokachi cheese. Melted raclet cheese goes very well with Tokachi grown potatoes. Now, let's return to Nishiawa in the Shikoku region, where we have yet to explore more on their food culture. Rebecca finds something very rare at a local shop. This is the shop's sign. It's tofu hung by a rope. It's called iwa or rock tofu because it's as hard as a rock. Local traditional food is also served at the farmer's lodge. The owner himself prepares the dishes for the guests. There is a flat stone placed in the Irori fireplace. What is this for? Hirarayaki is a dish prepared on a flat stone with miso walls. Ingredients are cooked inside these walls. At the lodge, guests can also help with the cooking. Hi. Local ingredients, such as the ayu fish from the river, are placed inside the miso walls. The iwa tofu we saw earlier. Sweetened miso is poured over the ingredients and left to simmer. Skewers are placed in the Idori fireplace. When cooking the ingredients on the skewer, the deco or head is turned to prevent them from burning. The temperature is adjusted from time to time. A delicious smell fills the room as the fish and vegetables are slowly cooked. The hirarayaki is almost ready. What a luxurious dinner. Starting with the hirarayaki. I don't. Oh. oh, it's so good. Like the skin is all crispy from the um, from the glaze, and the fish inside is all fluffy. It's it's really good. <laughs> I saw this. 
The iwa tofu is also used in the dekomawashi, this time having a more fragrant flavor. Mm. <laughs> Idori is a traditional Japanese eating space where the family can get together. Interacting with the local people is the best part of traveling. The next morning, we set out to see extraordinary scenery, recommended by the lodge owner. Oh, wow, what an incredible view. It's beautiful. I'm really lucky I got to see this. A sea of clouds spreads across the mountains. It's just surrounded by these mountains. There's so little reminder of, of the rest of the world. So it's, it's very peaceful here. So much green. In the 1970s, one visitor from overseas came to the Nishiawa area and was fascinated with the traditional lifestyle and scenery. Alex Kerr, an American Oriental culture researcher named this region the Hidden Paradise, and together with the people living in the area, he restored an old house that he had purchased to conserve the remaining scenery. This house is now being used as a guest house and is becoming popular among travelers from abroad. we found a little restaurant that serves one of the region's traditional food. Ah, this is Deiko Tsuzuki. Here, one can experience traditional soba noodle making. Buckwheat soba is one of the region's local products Nishiawa buckwheat has a richer taste compared to noodles from other regions. Buckwheat is ground to a powder in this millstone. Once powdered, water is slowly added and kneaded. It is then stretched out thinly with a rolling pin and finely cut. Oh, yeah, that's a lot easier. <laughs> Soba making is another traditional technique passed down by the women living in the region. So, how does Rebecca's soba taste? No. 
ボロボロに切れとるでしょそう、うん、つなぎがな余計入ってないけんこれの方が食べやすい食べやすい<笑>ジビエ、オーゲーム、such as deer and war meat。Are often consumed in this region. Suzuki enjoys telling travelers and passing on stories about the lifestyle and food culture. ちょっと歌って。<笑><笑> Uh, so, you really feel like you're making a journey.、Uh, you know, every, everything about,、uh, you know, sort of modern Japan sort of, sort of falls away, and、uh, it, it does feel like you're coming to a secret hidden place. And、uh, it's incredibly beautiful with the, the mountains.、Uh, I feel really lucky.、Uh, it's so green. Take a deep breath and really breathe the mountain air. Check out this website to see 100 delicious and scenic locations in Japan, chosen by the Savor Japan Project in cooperation with TripAdvisor, the world's largest travel site. This program was made possible by the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, and Fisheries.